Hey everybody, this is Spoonie, and today I want to show you how to build one of my favorite trap bases that's not only cheap, but also easy to build. This base will also alert you whenever the trap has been sprung, that way you don't have to waste time checking on it. So here's how it works. A would-be raider might see that some of the doors in the space have been left open, so this base will be a prime target for players looking for something easy. Once they've breached the main doors, they'll see some boxes, and even if they take the time to look around, there's no door controllers, lasers, or other traps in sight. So when they move in to check for loot, they'll be greeted by two shotgun traps as soon as they open the box. They'll naturally come back to the base after dying to try and loot their corpse, only to realize those doors that have been left open are now closed, sealing their body inside. This is a great opportunity for you to either wait for them and get even more loot from them, or to just go on in and collect what they lost. So here's how you build it. First, you'll need to place down two square foundations followed by one triangle foundation off of one of the longer sides. Next, place your walls, ceilings, and a small door frame at the front of your airlock and two full-size door frames in the remaining two openings. After that, we'll add our doors, one sheet metal door for the front and two metal double doors for the large door frames. When placing the double doors, it's important to make sure that they are going to open outward into the airlock so that they can be seen from outside the base to be open. Have the second double doors open inwards towards the back of the base. Place locks on the doors, and then we'll move on to our tool cupboard, our loot box, and a respawn bag. This is what your setup should look like so far. Next, we're going to place two shotgun traps. You could probably get by with just one, but if you have the gears for a second, I would make two. The first shotgun trap should be placed at an angle directly where the intruder will be standing when they open the box. The second should be placed slightly more towards the entrance so that they don't have a chance to move out of the way if they're heavily armored. Add shells to your shotgun traps. Definitely don't forget to put ammo in these. And then we'll move on to our bait room, which just has one small box, one large box, and one tier one workbench. You'll want to place the workbench backwards, facing the wall, so that the laser that we will use to trigger the trap isn't seen by the intruder. The box on the bottom of the workbench can block the laser visually, but doesn't stop it from actually functioning. Without this, the laser can be seen by someone being cautious and will likely stop the raider, letting them know it's a trap base. To finish up setting up this trap, we're going to need one small battery, one solar panel, one memory cell, one laser, an RF broadcaster, and an RF receiver, a button, a siren light, plus two door controllers. Start by tucking your laser behind the glue box on the bottom of the workbench. Next, we'll need to place down our battery somewhere in the back room, and we'll need to set up a solar panel on the roof. Once we connect the solar panel to the input on the battery, we can place down and connect two door controllers behind the door in the back room. Next, unlock the first double door by holding down the use key while looking at it. Then, press pair to door on the first door controller. The bottom light should turn green, indicating it's connected. Lock the door again and repeat this process with the second door and the second door controller. Finally, place down your memory cell and a button. Get out your wire tool and we're going to start wiring this up. Connect the button to the reset connection on the center right side of the memory cell. The output on the battery will need to be connected to the input on the bottom of the memory cell. Connect the inverted output on the top left of the memory cell to the bottom of the first door controller. Use the pass-through on the top of the first door controller to connect to the laser's input on the left side. Try your best to hide the wiring as to not give away that there's something behind this workbench. Use the power out connection on the right side of the laser to then connect to the set connection, which is the topmost connection on the right side of the memory cell. And finally, we're going to connect the primary output, which is the top right connection of the memory cell, to the bottom of the second door controller. And the base is now ready. All that's left is to set up the indicator to let us know that the trap has been sprung. To do this, we're going to set down an RF broadcaster and use the pass-through on the top of the second door controller to power it. Set the frequency to whatever you'd like, I'll just use 400. Then, in your main base, set up a light and an RF receiver. You'll only need to use two power, so just one branch with its default branch-off amount will work. Set the receiver to the same frequency as the broadcaster and use the pass-through on the receiver to connect to the light. This will trigger the light whenever the trap has been sprung. And that's it. The trap base is ready to go. 
The only thing we have to do now is arm the trap by pressing the button in the back room. The door should close behind you. In order to exit the base after you've armed the trap, you will have to suicide or set up a timer between the button and the memory cell. The best part of this trap base is it's easy to rearm by replacing the sheet metal door on the front of the base and then just pressing the button. So would you fall for this trap base? Let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.